A long time ago, even before I got my AMD WinMax 2, the gamepad and mouse switch on my Intel device stopped working. And unfortunately, the default mode of the gamepad switch is mouse mode, so I could not use my WinMax 2 for gaming and I had to switch back to my good old WinMax 1. GPD sent me a free micro switch so I could replace the underlying button myself. The shipping of that part took about 4 weeks or longer and in the meantime I got my AMD unit so I did not bother to repair my Intel unit. Last week I joined with Dragonbox and we went to Austria to showcase all kind of awesome devices. The event was called Level Up and it is a gaming convention. Of course, the family went with me. Thanks to that exhibition, I finally decided that it's time to repair my Intel unit so I have more devices people can play with. To reach below that button, I had to open up my device and to take out the battery and the PCB. I was very pleased by how well the WinMax 2 was built. It's super easy to replace the battery, nothing is glued and pretty much the whole device uses the same type of screws. If you are like me and tend to lose a few screws during the lifetime of such a device, don't worry, there are plenty of screws in there so you can distribute them where they are needed most. The shoulder buttons are a separate module and the gaming buttons and the nubs are each on their own PCB. You don't have to throw away the whole PCB but can replace just the faulty parts. The one thing I did not like was that I had to remove the heatsink in order to remove the PCB. That means whenever you remove the PCB you are forced to repaste or to waste a little bit of the precious PTM7950. In the second part of the video I will show you how I remove the parts bit by bit and where all the hidden screws and flex cables are located. For me it's the first time I removed the PCB of a WinMax 2 so the order in which I proceeded might not be optimal. Still my unit survived and it was stable during the two days of the exhibition. For me that's confirmation enough that you can safely follow my lead. The disassembly went flawless but during the assembly process I made a crucial mistake. I forgot to connect the cables for the D-pad and the left stick. And of course the connectors for those cables are located right beneath the heatsink. So I had to remove the heatsink a second time, unscrew the PCB and make sure that all the cables are sticking upwards. After sacrificing even more PTM7950 I was relieved as the whole gamepad was now functional and the unit was working fine. My verdict after going through the whole procedure is that assembling and disassembling the WinMax 2 is super easy. The hardest part is not to forget any of those nasty cables. I did not record the second time I assembled the unit as I was a little bit under time pressure to get everything set up before the exhibition. That means that the video is missing the part where I connect the three cables which are located beneath the heatsink. However, I will show a picture and highlight the connectors at the appropriate time, so don't worry, you won't miss them if you follow this guide. Let's finally start with disassembling the unit. If you have watched my PTM7950 video, then you will already know which screws to remove. Remember that my unit does not have an LTE module. If your unit does have one, make sure to disconnect the cable beneath the lid. Unscrewing the fan is straightforward. Those two screws and the screw which holds the SSD in place are the only ones which are different from the rest.
It is easier to disconnect that cable if you remove the battery first. The speakers are each located in their own module, so don't be afraid to take them out together with the battery. There are many screws which hold the motherboard in place, make sure not to miss one. Once you have unscrewed the heatsink, it requires a bit of force to remove it from the APU. Here you can see the shoulder button and the magnetic trigger. The blue one is especially hard to pull off until you realize that that blue part is a grip to pull off the cable from the connector. Have a look at the inside of the Winmax 2. I did not disconnect the display cable as that was not necessary for repairing the mouse button. On the Win 3 it was a bit hard to disconnect and reconnect that cable, so I decided to leave it connected for this case. I left the black tape on the motherboard as I considered it as a nice protective layer. Here is the new switch, time for some soldering. Removing the old switch was quite hard and I had to pretty much destroy the old one to get it off. Luckily nothing was damaged and mounting the new one was flawless.
Before you mount the heatsink, make sure to connect those three cables as you won't be able to do it afterwards. You already know the result, my Intel unit is repaired and stable and it's ready for the Gamescom in August. I will be there with Dragonbox and if everything goes well, we will have a Winmix 2 refresh and a GPD G1 with us. If you are from Germany or any other country from Central Europe, feel free to visit us and personally verify that both of my Winmix 2 units are still alive after all the torturing they had to suffer. See you next time. Bye bye.